Oh my goodness. Now we're ready for our next talk. And I hope you all are ready because I am excited. Our next speaker is the incomparable, the fantastic, the ever joyous Serena TD. Her favorite cartoon is Adventure Time and who can blame them? It is a pretty fantastic and all around delightful cartoon with as many princesses as it has adventures. Everyone, please welcome Serena. All right, hello everyone, hello world. So today I am talking about tracing. I'm so happy you're all here. Like the title says, we're gonna talk about tracing and how spans are just friends that we made along the way. There we go. About me. So I'm an SRE at Optum. And if you haven't heard of Optum, it's like the healthcare delivery and technical part of United Health Group. And originally, my career trajectory was I was an electrical engineer going to go into embedded systems. And then a quirk in the job market's like to the dev side of the world with you. And then I kind of got stuck there and kind of started doing Prometheus stuff. And someone's like, oh, yes, you're a good SRE. And I'm like, neat. That's what that word is. And now I'm building a tracing platform that's going to come up in this talk. And basically, it's all about friends. Boop, boop, boop. So quick thing, heads up, like, what is tracing? And it's like, a trace is a bunch of spans. And it's like, OK, well, what's a span then? And it's like a bunch of breadcrumbs that your data leaves all along the way when it's touching various systems. So like you have someone click a button, your front end hits an a API, your API goes to your database or dev null, whatever floats your boat. And it's like a super cool debugging tool and it's great. And, uh, and just going to share like a, where am I at today? Cause like, this process, this journey is still kind of working. It's a work in progress. So it's like, and I hope the experience and the content is helpful to establish some credibility as well as helping you get off the ground. So, so far I got money to go build things because cloud bills are cheap and recently just got my team together and we're working on things, plugging away, closing GitHub issues, moving those cards on our GitHub board and trying to make a very nice thing. Um, Cause I've seen some internal services go where you have to jump through a bunch of hoops. And my goal is to make, lower the amount of hoops, ideally no hoops. So we're gonna talk about my past, the present and the very optimistic future. So first thing you got to do is you have to build your party. And this is like super important, especially if they are, you know, Timmy and Tommy, the good people at the Nook Stop. And also like our earlier talk about building your team. So in my thing, I noticed like a friendly engineering manager. They're going to understand your product. They get tracing, they kind of get the tech parts. And then it's and then they go sell it to other managers because they open up doors that you didn't even know existed. Like my company is like 300,000 plus people. There are entire venues I don't even know existed. And the other thing is I spec'd up the individual contributor tree. I do a lot of ops style things, but like the business talk and the selling is not my strong suit. I can do it. It's just, I haven't invested in those skills. And that's kind of the main thing is like your manager also has the digital equivalent of their Rolodex, the thing that's like, hi, I have so many contacts for you. Here are some doors. I'm just going to kick them open for you. And then like thing, like you can solo this, but I wouldn't recommend it because you're going to have to tackle a big boss. You're going to like, I am more of an infrastructure person. I can sling a bunch of Go and write a bunch of Kubernetes YAML. But if it comes to like the finer points of Go testing and writing good APIs, I can, they're not my strong suit, but I have a coworker who's like really awesome at that. And I am super happy about that. 
And then also a product manager. They are the people that will go and be like, hey, so you're do going off, you know, into the weeds. Maybe we'll at least just like try to like recenter our efforts. And they also make sure that, you know, your product is nice and polished and keeping you, you know, grounded and making sure you're answering like user needs and not just chasing the cool thing. And then, and when I was almost writing this, technical writers, please get one. They will help you level up your docs. They are the best. Whatever they want for monies, just give them more. I can't overstate my love of tech writers. I've worked with a few of them in the past and they are amazing. And then another thing I don't have a bullet for, but also have like a high up like distinguished or staff engineer so I can go up to them and be like, hi, I want to do a thing, but is this completely off base? Am I onto something here or am I just chasing down random weeds? It's kind of helpful to get it like an experience take. So you have your party built and should you craft something? Yes, you have to craft the thing. You know, we go get some money from our management people. They do all the finance magic and it's all good. And you got some people to help build the thing and it's great. So you have to put, have a place to sell, store your spans because like, I don't know about y'all. I haven't sold dev null as a service yet. That'd be super cool though, if you did. Uh, and the other thing is I'm like using open telemetry which is great. The collector has saved my butt so many times. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. And we're running all of our workloads on Kubernetes because again, Helm charts, Kubernetes and YAML, great. Wrangling Packer templates and systemd units, eh, a little outside of our skill set. But don't check the math on that for complexity. So talking about open telemetry, why open telemetry? Isn't it in beta, Serena? And it's like, yes, you're asking a great question. But I've previously made bets on Thanos when it was super early before release candidate. And I'm just going to say, YOLO, it's all good. Plus the APIs are actually kind of su sweet. Like I was talking about the collector and why I love it, because I recently had someone um, send everything. They were sampling 100% spans all the time. And it filled up my Elasticsearch cluster. And I got very sad when I had to say, hi, I'm so happy you're using my service. You kind of tipped it over and I have to drop all the data. I'm so sorry. And with open telemetry, we're like able to just say, hey, Actually, okay, you're sending us everything, 100%. That's great. We love the energy. Let's just bring it down a little, bring it down a little bit. Just let's say like 10%. And that is very nice. And then also one of the things I have some security requirements and like mutual TLS for all the things, Jaeger, Zipkin, OpenTelemetry Native, other protocols I'm missing. It's got it and it's great. I love it. And also my company where quirks are we've kind of have, have a lot of tooling for issuing client certificates. And that is great. And I've only touched the surface. I believe I saw the agenda. There's an open telemetry talk later on in the day. Stick around. I sure am. And that's pretty much it. Just I love open telemetry. It's great check it out. And then you have to trace your stuff. I am a firm believer in doing the leading by example thing. So any code we write, it's got open telemetry. And yes, as shocked as my character is in this slide, you do have to, there was a saying that one has to eat their own dog food. My VP is like, dog food isn't tasty. We drink our own champagne. Even though I guess since it's made in Minnesota, it's more like sparkling wine, since it doesn't come from that region in France, I'm sorry for that overplayed joke, but it is what it is. So 
on my platform, we hook up our ingress controller for some free tracing. Our tracing components that collect traces, send traces, it's traces all the way down. And we got Grafana and Prometheus debugging those slow queries. It's amazing. And then sometimes at the end of the day where I'm just like, gosh, I want to look at the thing I built and I just run some queries in the UI because I am a complete nerd and just watching the traces do their thing. And who knows, maybe there's someone lovingly handcrafting HTTP headers and curl. Maybe it's a pain in the butt, but I'm not going to stop you. So now we have a platform. And OK, but the, if I'm saying tracing is all about friends, don't you need people to actually, you know, use the thing? So I have a loving home. I have a UI. The Jaeger UI is pretty nice. Rafana's also got a nice interface. But I can't just, you know, hoard it like a dragon and just keep all my spans here. No, we got We have to share, and it's going to be nice. But we're early on as a product. We're not super mature. And we're just going to have to go to people that are like, hi, our onboarding is pretty rough. Our docs are next to non-existent. Are you cool with that? Kind of like an Animal Crossing, your first couple of villagers are like, oh yeah, we're totally cool sleeping in tents for the first couple of days until Tom Nook upgrades us all to houses. And kind of the other things I've looked for in coworkers are the, the YOLO-driven developers. The Or like, hey, Serena, have you seen this cool thing on Hacker News or Reddit? Like that's kind of the development we're going for. And then like the main couple of people I'm going for within those categories are people who run your container platforms, your Kubernetes, your OpenShifts, ranchers. I think I'm leaving off so many other Kubernetes distributions, but basically running containers and then APIs. I don't know about like my specific companies, we have APIs that call APIs that call APIs that go talk to a mainframe. I don't know. I just don't understand why no one wants to write COBOL these days. So we're going to talk about our platform friends. Or this is a section in which I finally understood what's the big deal about service mesh. So. I only put, I put SDO in, you can put Nginx, Linkerd, whatever have you, whatever the flavor of the day is, mostly because I've only usually heard service mesh as a stand-in for just extra unneeded complexity. And I was like, well, I don't get this whole thing. And then I started doing tracing work. And then one of my coworkers put it in and he, they have a bunch of sample apps that don't have any tracing enabled. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is great. I can kind of see what's going on without doing any work. And this is like the, one of the coolest things about like baking it into the platform level components is that your users did nothing. Your end users did nothing. And they all of a sudden get like, whoa, we have vi better visibility into our apps. What if we traced our apps? Would we get to see more? And I go up to them and I'm like, yes. You'd go from plain old standard definition to like high def to ultra super duper high def. And kind of talking to platform people first is it lets you just be like, hey, do me a favor, do this thing. Here's a here's a tiny little bit of YAML. Just uh just throw it in. It'll be cool. Okay. And it's like super low hanging fruit. And then when all your platforms are traced, you can kind of go up to your API people like Antonio. Antonio is a rock star, slings so much Express JS, Kotlin, Spring, whatever the REST frameworks of the day, Gen, Gorilla Mux, whatever. If it's a framework for APIs, they've written it. But, and I'm just going to say full disclosure, this is a future part of my diabolical plan to get all services traced at my company. 
So we have a pretty large API system because not everyone wants to write COBOL. Sometimes people want, sometimes people want like the data in their own way because apparently no one knows like there's so many notions of like these various health data things and they all kind of come in their own different flavor formats. And I'm sure our mainframe engineers are kind of happy that like not everyone is hitting the mainframes directly now and just having an intermediate API. So the ideal partners you're looking for are the kind of people that are like, you know, they started doing their whole modernization thing because my company has been in business for a while and they're doing the whole like DevOps, it's cool. And then I can be like, hello, would you like help debugging your microservices? Because you can't just hook up a debugger to one process nowadays. And they're like, whoa, this is a thing we can do? And then I can be like, yes, yes, I can help you. But you're also playing with a little bit of fire here because if these APIs are, you know, the backbone of your business, they're going to send you so many events even when sampled. So you get some built-in load testing. But I have no illusions. They're probably going to take down my platform again. And this is why right-sizing auto-scaling is kind of helpful. Like, I had my disks filled up, fill up once. I had a bad time, but we got over it. I mean, now with enough time, deleting all of the dev data was kind of funny, not looking back. And then the other things you can tell them is like, hey, why are you spending so much time optimizing this path of data when really you should be optimizing this other part? This other part gets so much more like traffic. And then you can have them spend their, hey, we're going to optimize our stuff you know, with way higher precision, get the most bang for our performance bucks. And we have to, at some point, we got to get a house. Because sometimes, you know, some of my early adopters are like, oh, yeah, we kind of like our tents. We enjoy the roughing it experience, including our cot. And then some people later on are going to be like, you know, I like the tent. I want to come onto your island. Can I get a house? Maybe a nook stop? Or not, not a nook stop, a nook's cranny. Maybe I want to talk to Blathers at the museum. And... I'm like, huh, you know, I'm not quite ready for you, but in a little bit of time, we're going to make some upgrades. You know, we're going to be able to like level up our docs, maybe get a tech writer to go through and just be like, hi, this is how you do tracing within our company. Because, and because again, I want the barrier to entry to be so low because the thing is with tracing, it is kind of a huge barrier for people to just get started when no one else has done the thing. But then later on, as more and more people start tracing their stuff, you kind of start seeing the interplays, the giant web of wibbly wobbly spaghetti microservices that are everywhere. And then other things I have to document, like for me, I'm like, hi, I want to know what data center you're running in. What region are you running in if you're in the cloud? Which cloud provider are you on? And I don't want them to get frustrated, you know, when I drop their fields saying, hey, I have strict metadata requirements. And they're like, well, the open source doesn't, doesn't say that we have to require that. I'm like, correct, open telemetry doesn't require it, but I do. But I can point you to a link and be like, here's the info I'm looking for. And then one of my coworkers earlier was like, hey, these libraries are really hackable. Do you think we can make our own little library on top of it? And I'm like, heck yeah, that sounds cool. Let's do the thing. And now we're going to start using our own rough internal library because personally, I'd prefer to find sharp edges so I can warn my users ahead of time, there be dragons here. And then so they can focus less on, huh, did I, am I using the right configs? And more the, oh my gosh, I'm learning a, so much new stuff about how my service behaves. And then they all end up happy. And then with that, I'm sorry to say, our time is coming to a close. 
and I just want y'all to get some Q&A in. So let's wrap this up. I have a bit at the end of my talks where I had a professor in school who was obsessed with saying, so when someone asks you at the dinner table what you learned today, you tell them this. So this is me basically saying, when someone at the lunch table asks you what's up, this is what you learned. Open telemetry. Use it. Just use it. The collector does so much work for you. The APIs, the great thing I love about it, you write your AP, you instrument your code with one API, and then your the exporters just handle the rest for you. So uh, you can accept whatever formats you want. And again, making friends is super important. Like teams can have their own metrics, their own logs, but traces go across service boundaries, across teams. And that's good because everything is so interconnected nowadays. And you need a variety of people to make it take off. Like I'm an infrastructure person. We have a couple junior devs that are finding their way through their specializations a product manager who is going to like remind us what features we need. And that's pretty much it. So on that note, so long and thanks for all the traces. Oh my gosh, Serena, everyone was so happy the whole time. Everybody give a very warm thank you to Serena TD. Hit her up on the Twitch chat, our Discord. Her Twitter handle is on the Twitch overlay. Anywhere you can do it. You are amazing. We loved it. There were so many good, <laughs> there were so many good jokes in the chat. I know that the open telemetry team is excited. <laughs> <laughs> and to see to see it getting hype and i know that i was just excited too uh we're all pretty sure there's an artisanal curl header shop now and you know i just if i could wish it into existence i would <laughs>